And finally, new rule. Someone has to explain, if our economy is doing so great, how come everyone is broke? Right. To me, the real lesson of this government shutdown is that we found out that federal workers, quintessential middle-class jobs, can't afford to miss one paycheck. I must have seen a hundred stories about furloughed workers that look like this. I literally don't know how I'm gonna provide for my kids. Furloughed interior worker Mallory Lorg rationing her insulin. First off, I can't pay my mortgage. This is a matter of life and death for me. I guess this is what Fox means by getting tired of winning. When did it get this desperate? One day, your alignment for the county, you miss a payday and you're Ratso Rizzo making coffee in a saucepan? <laughs> this shutdown is not about the wall. It's about the wallet. And it's more proof that the great American middle class is disappearing faster than R. Kelly's Facebook <laughs> friends. <laughs> That is the story here, that our economy no longer creates a middle class, it sucks it dry. All... Thank you. All middle class means now is that you're poor, but you don't do meth. <laughs> and remember, this is the good economy, where 40% of Americans can't afford a $400 emergency expense, and 50 million have nothing saved for retirement. Sorry, but it's not middle class when your retirement plan is a lotto ticket. When I was a kid, being a middle class family meant only one breadwinner, two cars, a vacation, and a paneled basement that smelled like cigarettes. <laughs> College was affordable. Getting sick didn't mean going bankrupt. It can go out to dinner once a week. You could have a dog, and when he got older, your parents could afford to send him to live on a farm where he was happier. <laughs> what? <laughs> But little by little, the middle class got squeezed. Now middle class means two breadwinners and one car. And the only reason your daughter can afford college at all is sugardaddies.com. <laughs> Vulture capitalism has done to our middle class what the airlines did to their customers because we didn't lose the comforts of being middle class all at once. They took it away from us an inch at a time, like leg room. Back in the day, flying was a joy. The seats were roomy. The chicken looked like something that was once a chicken. And the bathrooms were large enough to enjoy the Mile High Club. Contrast that with today, where there's first class, business class, premium economy, economy, and fuck you. <laughs> This was coach as recently as the 90s. Here it is now. <laughs> I, I remember so vividly. I was 37 when I, oh, Ooh. I blew that up. When I flew first class for the first time and it blew my mind. They were literally carving a roast in the cart in the aisle like it was friggin' Thanksgiving up there. <laughs> now your food comes in a box. You used to get good stuff on a plane, a meal, drunk. <laughs> the seat in front of you could recline without starting a fist fight. <laughs> and just like with the economy writ large, they squeezed incrementally though. First they took away the pillows, then the free booze, the free headset, free luggage allowance, leg room, the whole can of Coke, the blankets, <laughs> blankets, putting an end to in-flight masturbation. Oh. <laughs> we lived in the good days. <laughs> it was our flying at. But on the upside, the, <laughs> the, the flight safety films are funny now. So porn parodies have something to look down on. But here's the thing about squeezing people and keeping them insecure. It virtually ensures that our long-term major problems never get fixed. Because reducing the debt, or repairing our infrastructure, or most importantly, halting climate change, requires long-term thinking, 
which is something you can't really do when the wolf is always at the door. Bangladesh will be underwater in 20 years. I'm underwater today. Whole Foods, I just want to get some food in my hole. <laughs> and that's just how the Koch brothers like it, to have people so caught up in today's problems, we never have time for tomorrow's.